death lurks in the shadows of time, often striking quickly without warning, sometimes tugging slowly at life. In our grief and sense of loss, we naturally desire to see our loved ones again. Is there only a thin veil that separates the living from the dead? Can the spirits of the deceased cross huh? over into our world Mom, to give us guidance you? and comfort in this life? Yes, sweet darling, it's me. I've been watching over you, honey, and I see that you're going to... In the sacred pages of God's Word, the truth about this mystery is revealed. Join us as seminar speaker Steve Orberg presents Deadly Delusions About Death and Hell. And now, the feature presentation, The Hot Topic of Hell. There is a lot of misunderstanding about this subject, and I hope to uh, clarify some things right from the Bible as we get in today. So let's bow our heads, and let's ask God to help us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the chance to be here again, and we pray that you will bless as your word is taught. May the Holy Spirit be here right now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, here we go. When it comes to the, the doctrine of hell, hell fire, there certainly are a lot of, of views that are being taught from the pulpits of the land. Uh, preachers stand up in front of their congregation and they say certain things. Some say hell means this, some say hell means that. They don't always agree with each other. And what I want to do today, as I've uh, promised to you that I would do every day, is I'm going to stick to this book and we're going to find out what the Bible says about the doctrine of hell. Does that sound good? What does God's Word actually say? All right, Matthew chapter 13. When you read this chapter, it's, uh, it's a series of parables that Jesus told. And there was one particular parable he told about a, a farmer who had a field, and then there was a harvest. And if you look at verse 36, in verse 36, Jesus began to explain this parable to his disciples. Verse 36 says, Then Jesus sent the multitude away, and he went into the house. And his disciples came to him, and they said, Declare to us the parable of the weeds, or the tares, of the field. Verse 37, Jesus answered and said to them, He that sows the good seed is the son of man. He is the farmer. The field is the world, or the good seed are the children of the kingdom, and the tares, which also some translations say the weeds, are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is who? Is the devil, right? And the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him do what? Hear. Let him hear, right, let him hear. Now as we hear what Jesus just said, as he explained this parable, would you say that Jesus Christ believed in a real fire or not? Okay, I see a lot of heads going and I hear your expressions. Yes, there's no, no question about it. There's a picture of uh, some fire coming out of some volcano or something and it's pretty clear when you read the words of Jesus Christ that he definitely believed in a real fire now notice verse 40 take a close look at verse 40 when does Jesus say this fire takes place right verse 40 he said as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire so shall it be at the end of this world so just at the beginning of this talk on this, we know there's a real fire, and we know according to Jesus Christ, it comes when? At the end of the world. All right, next text. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. Let's see if Peter believed in a real fire, and let's see, let's see when he said that fire was going to come. 2 Peter, near the book of Revelation, near the end of the Bible. 2 Peter chapter 3. And let's look at the seventh verse. Peter is writing about the future, the day of the Lord. And he said in verse 7, But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, by the word of God, they are being kept in store or reserved. They are reserved unto what? 
unto fire. They're being reserved or preserved for fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So, based upon this text, would you say that Peter believed in a real fire? See that word fire right there? You see it in your Bible? Peter definitely believed there was a real fire. Now notice, uh, if you look carefully at the text, it's rather shocking to think about what he's actually saying. When does he say uh, this fire is going to take place? Is, does he say this fire is burning now? Or is he putting this fire in the future? He's putting it in the future. Uh, he says that this fire is reserved until the day of judgment, for the day of judgment. And he also says that that's where ungodly men are going to be. And notice, uh, where is this fire going to be? Where does he say, what's being reserved for fire? He says, the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, being preserved, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. Now that slide illustrates what this text is saying. It's a very uh, awesome text. And Peter is talking about the heavens, not where God's throne is, but the atmospheric heavens, the earth that we're walking on, uh, all of what we see around us, one of these days is going to be burned in fire. It's going to happen on the day of judgment, and that is where the lost are eventually going to end up. That's what the text says. So, uh, point number two, Peter believed there was a real fire, and again, it happens at the end. Now, go back to chapter two of Second Peter and look at verse nine. Here's another passage about the day of judgment. 2 Peter 2.9 Peter said, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust, those are the lost, unto or until the day of judgment to be what? To be punished. So based upon this verse, when, do, when are the unjust finally punished? When do they get punished? On what day? On the day of judgment, right, on the day of judgment. That would make sense that uh, somebody would be judged first and then they would be punished for their sin. Now, what we've just read so far is really quite different from what most people think when they think about hell fire. Most of the time when people think about hell and preachers preach about hell, uh, people think in churches, on, and those that listen to these messages on radio and TV, they think of a place... In their minds, they think it's down there under the ground, who knows how far, maybe you know, 5 miles, 10 miles, 20, 20 miles, nobody really knows, but it's down there, and that's a place where the soul of a person who is lost, the soul leaves their body, and the soul goes down there under the ground right away at the moment of death, and that's where the soul is burning in hell. Isn't that what most people think when they think of hell? It's under the ground, and that's where you go when you die, if you're lost. That's where, you, that's where you burn. Now, this may shock you, but this is true. I'm telling you this, it's true. There is only one passage in the entire Bible that seems to teach the common understanding of hell that you go down under the ground at the moment when you die. Only one. And that is the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And we'll be looking at that before we're done. It's in Luke 16, and we'll be getting to that in just a little bit. But it's shocking to realize that that uh, teaching is nowhere else in the Bible. It's uh, not in the New Testament anywhere. It's not in the book of Matthew. Matthew's Gospel, it's not there. It's not in Mark. It's not in the book of John. It's not in the book of Acts, which is the story of the early church going out and spreading the Gospel around the world. None of the uh, people in the book of Acts preach that. It's not in any of the writings of Paul. And Paul wrote most of the New Testament. Paul never taught that idea even one time. It's not in the book of James, little book of James. It's not in first or second Peter. Peter didn't say anything about it. It's not in the book of Jude. And it's not in the book of Revelation. 